What is up, rock and metal fans? Yes, I know I keep doing this to you, and uh, I come for a while and I disappear again. <laughs> Sorry about that, but hey, this is just a hobby, and you know, this is something I just want to do to share with you know, especially a lot of new guys who are getting into the rock and metal scene. Especially when you look at stuff which is a little more classic and retro and um, you know, things which are really great to get into. So anyway, um, I'm back. Uh, hopefully got a few more videos coming out straight after this in quicker succession. So let's get started. So uh, Linkin Park was a band that, you know, I've really liked since their debut. I mean, I could say that, you know, for most of the bands I've listened to, I was either not born or I was too young to actually even know what that music was about or anything like that. But this was one of the more recent bands, if you could say 20 odd years or something like that. I mean, something a little more recent where I was actually old enough to be around for when the debut actually came out. And that would be this album, which is Hybrid Theory. And I can still remember being in my friend's car when he actually got so excited. And he told me, he's like, dude, you got to check this out. I mean, hear this new song by this band, uh, which I just couldn't quite remember the name at that point. But he played Paper Cut. And uh, it still remains as one of my favorite Linkin Park songs even till today. Uh, I mean, this album has got so much. I mean, I would go and be bold enough to agree with Chester and one of the late Chester Bennington, God rest his soul. But I would agree with Chester when he said that, you know, um, Linkin Park kind of revived um, many things about the rock genre, you know, and gave it this forward, you know, thinking view. Now, I know a lot of guys out there would disagree and, you know, hate that kind of a statement, but uh, just being someone, you know, who tries to be uh, open-minded, look at different things, I think that it was kind of true because Hybrid Theory was, uh, yeah, it had this sort of rap, new metal kind of element. It had, you know, like um, electronica in there. It had a few other things, but there was something interesting about it, like literally a fusion of so many great elements, but on the chassis of rock, you know, and I think they did it really well. I mean, they were such unique in their vocal style, uh, the guitar tones, the, you know, the uh, DJing by, uh, uh, which was there by Mr. Han, uh, and so on. And I think that, you know, this is an album that really did a lot of wonderful things and so on. So I think that there's that, you know, in the end, which I think many would argue is the biggest track on this album. Uh, a lot of people love One Step Closer. Uh, you've got Crawling, which is another huge epic number. I personally like Cure for the Itch quite a bit. Uh, pushing Me Away is kind of like sometimes a song that gets a little forgotten, but I think it's great. Uh, so that's for, um, you know, this particular album, which is there. And then if uh, I look at uh, the next one, and I am going to actually choose the first few, because see, one thing about Linkin Park was I love their lyrics, how much attention they pay to them. I love the way in which they experiment with their sound, their sincerity and so on. I'm not, and I'm not trying to sound like, you know, one of those, you know, uh, close-minded idiots, you know, who just probably will say that, oh, I don't like the new stuff and the old stuff is classic. Well, look, maybe I'm just by default falling into that uh, trap and I don't mean to be disrespectful to the other guys, you know, sometimes don't like a lot of new outputs that bands create but, and like the more older sound. But anyway, uh, I think Meteora uh, is a great uh, follow-up record. I think that, you know, songs that... Um, I think Numb is, again, what in the end was to a hybrid theory. I think Numb is really that song that, you know, was gargantuan. It was huge. It was just so epic in its, uh, you know, focus and sound and all that. And I think Justice Bennington's uh, voice was, you know, just phenomenal on this. And, uh, of course, you have other great tracks like, um, uh, you know, Easier to Run, Lying uh, From You, um, you know, don't stay from the inside. Somewhere I belong is uh, was a great track. It still is, but you know the problem is that it's just been so overplayed. I'm a little saturated with it right now. So uh, do do excuse me, guys, if uh, it's not something I'm gonna like keep a lot of praise on. I mean, the same thing with kind of breaking the habit. Great song, but just again a little overplayed. That doesn't take away from the magic and uh, you know strong musicianship of this record. Don't get me wrong on that. Uh, so overall, a great follow-up and, you know, something that I think worked really, really well. Now, the next record that um, I think, uh, you know, demonstrated, you know, not just their ability to expand on their sound, but, you know, I think really, to me at least, is my favorite record. I mean, yeah, it just kind of inches ahead of, you know, Hybrid Theory 
uh, in that sense is, um, you know, Minutes to Midnight. And I think Minutes to Midnight captures what I, at least I think is their best sound, their best songs, their best performance, their best, you know, uh, vibe. You name it. Uh, I think it's just something that, you know, there's something unique about this record. And again, this is just my opinion. I know a lot of guys who don't like this record. They felt that the band just went way off target and probably prefer albums like, you know, uh, Living Things or, um, you know, the record that came after this, which is a Thousand Sons. Um, and that's fine. That's cool. You know, I mean, I respect that. But for me personally, this is my absolute favorite. And I think that, you know, um, uh, this, the two songs that I would actually pick out here as being like really strong are like, you know, Leave Out All The Rest and uh, Valentine's Day. You know, I think those two songs, you know, for me, are like the two peak points of this uh, album. Uh, a lot of people uh, really like, um, you know, songs like, you know, Bleed It Out, uh, Shadow of the Day, which I think has a sort of leave it out, leave out all the rest kind of vibe to it. In some ways, not to say it's the same, it's definitely not, but you know, just something about the vibe. Uh, the little things that uh, little things uh, give you away and so on. So I think that um, this is really where they really hit their peak. Uh, it's really where their, uh, you know, years of toiling and hard work came together and it really put them in, you know, like this very strong position and have made them into a legacy band, you know. So so overall, guys, those are my opinions. Uh, my opinion, rather. Uh, those are the three records. I think that, you know, guys who are new to Linkin Park should definitely check out the first three. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Love to hear from you. It doesn't have to be the same opinion as mine. Just like to know what you guys think. And uh, I will definitely catch you on the next edition. Take care, guys. Bye.